Welcome to your video on section 2.2, Formulas and Applications. In this lesson, we are going to be learning how we can take formulas and manipulate them using the same operations that we do when solving equations. And we're going to use those manipulated formulas to apply them in application problems. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is our first formula. Can anybody guess what that formula stands for? Oops, I'm in highlighter mode. P equals 2L plus 2W. That is the perimeter of a rectangle. If you didn't know that, that's okay. Cool if you did. Um, but what we really care about is that we're trying to solve this equation for W. So notice right here is my term that has a W in it. This does not have a W and that does not have a W. So my goal is to move everything to the blue to the same side and keep my pink to the other side. So I'm going to move my 2L over by subtracting it. Because P and L are not the same thing, I cannot combine them together like we would normally in an equation. So I'm going to leave that just as 2 minus, or P minus 2L is equal to 2W. Now the only thing that's keeping the W from being by itself is that 2. So I'm going to divide it out. And the textbook says that's simplified enough, so I'm just going to leave it as P minus 2L all over 2. And there's our final answer. Now I'd like you to try one on your own. Please check your work. Did you get K is equal to M minus 3B over 2? Hopefully you did. If not, go back and recheck your work and see if you can get yourself to that point. I'll skip that. Next problem, we're going to make it a bit more complicated. So now we have A is equal to 2HW plus 2LW plus 2LH. Okay, and we're solving for L. So I'm going to do the same thing. Here I have an L. Oh, here I have an L. That does not have an L. That does not have an L. So I'm going to move all the blues to the left, and I'm going to keep the pinks to the right. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 2HW from both sides, which gives me A minus 2HW is equal to 2LW plus 2LH. So now I have a problem because I have two different terms that have L's in them. I want to get just to one L. So if you guys remember the distributive property, what we're going to be doing is the reverse of the distributive property. Because both of those terms have an L in it, I can remove that L, so factor it out. And if I take it out of the first term, I would only be left with a 2 and a W. Now, if you were to distribute that, wouldn't it get you back to where we just came from? Yes, it would. So if I take out the L in the second term, then I'm just left with a 2 and an H, which is great because now I only have one single L, which is what I was trying to attain. So now I need to get just the L. So here I have an L. This stuff does not have an L. So I'm going to move the blue over to the other side. Well, what's the operation happening between the pink and the blue? Multiplication. So now I'm going to divide out that 2w from both sides, or the 2w plus 2h, which would make that go away. And I'm going to divide out 2w plus 2h over here. And there we have our answer. L is equal to a minus 2hw all over 2w plus 2h. These are not written in set notation like they were back in section 2.1 because these aren't, these aren't solutions. All we're doing is just manipulating the equations. So just circle it and be done. So now see if you can use that same formula and solve it for W. Did you get W equals A minus 2LH divided by 2H plus 2L? Hopefully you did. If not, go back and rework it. And if you still can't figure it out, then let me know. Example number three. Now we have C is equal to negative 2T plus 4 all over T. So again, we have two T's, but notice they are not in the same spot. One's up in the numerator of that fraction and the other one's in the denominator. So we need to do some manipulation before I can get all the pinks to one side and all the blues to the other side. So I need to get rid of the fraction itself. 
So how do we get rid of a divide by t? Well, we would multiply both sides by t. So now I have ct is equal to negative 2t plus 4. So again, I'm going to highlight. So here t, there's a t. Here I have a no t. But my plus sign kind is blending in with that 4. So let's move everything with the t, so the pinks to one side, and keep the blue to the other side. So now the question is, which way should we move the pinks? Probably would be best to move the pinks to the left, just because then both of them would be positive. That negative 2t would move over and become a positive. If I move that ct over, then everything would be negative, and who wants to have negatives in their answers? So moving the t over, 2t over by adding it gets us ct plus 2t is equal to 4. So I still have two t's. So if you guys remember from the last problem, how do I make two t's turn into one t? Well, I factor it out. I use the reverse distributive property. So if I take out of t from the first, I'm left with just the c. If I take out the t from the second term, I'm left with just the two is equal to four. So now I have one t. This does not have a t. We need to get rid of that blue by dividing it out, because that's the operation that's occurring. So dividing out a c plus 2 gets us t is equal to 4 divided by c plus 2. Again, pause this video at any point in time if you feel like you need to stop to catch up with writing things down. I'm just trying to keep moving so these videos don't end up being super long. Okay, I'm going to have you try this one on your own. Solve for B. Welcome back. Hopefully you got the answer of, hopefully you got the positive version, the right side, B equals C minus, or all over 3 minus A. If you do move to the other side, you could have possibly also have gotten B equals negative C all over A minus 3. Either of those are correct answers. So as long as you got to 1, good job. If you didn't, Take a picture of your work. If you can't figure it out, shoot it to me in the Remind app. I'll try to help you. Okay, let's keep on going. Here we have 5G minus 4 equals 6H minus FG. So again, solving for G, highlight my G terms, my non-G terms. So we want to get all the pink to one side and all the blue to the other side. Now I want you to think for a moment, would it be best to move all the pinks to the left or to the right? Hopefully you said left, because then that would give us positive G terms. We could technically move it to the right, and that's okay. Then you would just have negatives in your answer. Um, but I personally like positives. So I'm going to add that FG to both sides, which gives me 5G plus FG is equal to, or sorry, not equals to, I forgot my minus 4 is equal to 6H. Now let's move the 4 over by adding it. So 5G plus FG is equal to 6H plus 4. So now again, I have two Gs. I want to take it to 1G, so I'm going to factor it out or use the reverse of the distributive property, which gets you 5 plus F equals 6H plus 4. Dividing out that 5 plus f, we'll get the g all by itself. So we end up with g is equal to 6h plus 4 all over 5 plus f. Circle it, call it good. Okay, so hopefully you feel like you're pretty sufficient in the manipulation of these formulas, these literal, literal equations, um, and now we can actually go to the application of them. So here is our first word problem example. Again, pause this at any point in time if you need to stop to take a moment to actually copy all this down. I'm going to assume that you're doing that because I'm going to keep on plugging through. So we got Janet Branson found that usually it took her 45 minutes each day to drive a distance of 15 miles to work. What was her speed? So we're talking about speed, we're talking about distance, and miles, that means we're probably going to be using our distance formula. 
You remember distance formula is equal to D equals RT. If you don't remember that, you're going to want to definitely jot that down, highlight it, label it, what each of those things stand for. The D is distance, your R is rate, your T is time. So let's go ahead and plug in what information they gave us. It says that she travels 15 miles to work. So that would be your distance. So I'm going to put that in place, substitute in place in D. We're trying to find her speed. So that means we're solving for R. And it says that she takes 45 minutes each day to drive a distance of 15 miles. So when we're talking about speed, we're talking about miles per hour. Emphasis on the word hour. Notice right now my time is listed in minutes. So I need to figure out what portion of an hour is 45 minutes? 60 minutes is a whole hour. So what fraction is 45 minutes out of those 60 minutes? Well, hopefully you can just think about a clock. 45 minutes would be 3 fourths or just divide 45 by 60, which would get you 0.75. So that would be our time. So it's taking 0.75 hours to travel 15 miles. So I want to put that time in as hours. So make sure that this is hours, unless it specifies something differently. OK, so 0.75. So we're solving for R. So R here is our manipulation. Get R all by itself. We just happen to have numbers already in place. Calculator in hand. There's my calculator. I don't know if this one has batteries in it. 15 divided by 0.75 is 20 miles per hour would be the rate. For these problems, please, please, please make sure that you do label your units because you're going to need to do that. Okay, try one very similar to the last one we did. Hopefully you got an answer of 40 miles per hour. If you didn't, make sure that when you plugged in your time, you didn't use 18. You did 18 divided by 60, which is 0.3. So hopefully you plugged in 0.3 for your T and your D equals RT equation. All right, so now we got to talk about percent problems. It's the last section that we have of our last topic that we have in this section. So if you guys remember when we're talking about percents, 1% is equivalent to 0 0.01, or sometimes we can think about it as one out of 100, right? So one over 100. If you guys remember way back when we had this equation that your partial amount over your whole amount is equal to your percent, and that should be represented as a decimal. So part over whole, right? Or is over of, you might remember those words is how you get to your percents. So here we have this problem that has a 50 liter mixture of acid and water that contains 10 liters of acid. What is the percent of acid in the mixture? Well, how do we find percent? Percent is equal to your part over your whole. So which is the part? Well, that's 10 liters. What is the whole? That is 50 liters. So when we go to divide that, we get 0 0.20, which means, what percent would that be? 20% would be our final answer. Pretty easy. These are going to be easy word problems in this section. Example number two, if a savings account balance of $3,550 earns 6% interest in one year, how much interest is earned? So our first formula that we used in these word problems were, was the distance. Distance equals rate times time. Here's a second formula that you should know and jot this down and put a big star around it on your notes is your simple interest formula. I equals PRT, where I represents the interest. P represents your principal, so how much money you're starting out with. R is your rate, which always as a decimal. And T is your time, which is usually in years. 
So if a savings account balance of $3,550 earns 6% interest in one year, how much interest? So how much interest? That's what we're solving for. So we're solving for I. My principal is my balance of $3,550. My rate is 6%. So 6% is a decimal is 0 0.06. And we have our time being 1. Now it's just calculator work. So 3,550 times 0 0.06 times 1 tells me that my interest earned would be $213. Do you remember that formula? Hopefully you do. Okay, try this one on your own. Hopefully you got an answer of 5%. One more for you to try on your own. Hopefully you got $960. Very good. And the last thing that we're gonna go through here is a little pie chart. Again, feel free to pause this, get it, jot it down. Um, in 2011, people in the United States spent an estimated $6 billion on Halloween-related purchases. Use the graph to determine how much of this money was spent on candy. So if you look down here, candy, it says we're at 31%. So I need to figure out what 31% of $6 billion is. So remember, percent is equal to part over whole. We're given a percent of 31. We're going to make that 0.31 as a decimal. I'm finding the part because the total estimate is $6 billion. Let's make sure we have enough zeros for that. Six billion, yep, all over X. All right, so here we go. Multiplying, or put that over one and cross multiply. That would get us X equals, so 0 0.31 of $6 billion. How many zeros do I need? Nine, three, four, six, nine. Gives me eight. One, eight, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we are at $1,860,000,000 would be how much is spent on candy a lot of candy. Okay, that concludes this video. Please check in with me with any questions, revisit anything in this video, and move on to the next assignment.